What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler. Today, we're going to be discussing what are the best drugs to sell. Hypothetically, if you were the plug, you woke up this very morning, and your name is Plugman Johnson, and you got to get to work, what are you moving today? This video answers that question. Hope you guys enjoy it. Drop a like if you do, and also remember that this is for entertainment purposes only, and I am not encouraging drug dealing. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, first and foremost on this tier list is the Xanax and Benzos. Now, in the last tier list video, I had actual pictures, but YouTube wasn't very happy about that. So today, we've got the family-friendly words, right? If your kid sees this and he says, Mom, what's heroin? You could come up with a lie. You know, you could say, for example, that's my cousin or something like that. Xanax and Benzos. Now, listen, everybody. Xanax, you, you all know, some of you might be new around here, so I'll explain. I am biased. I hate these. I hate Xans. I hate what they've done to my friends. But we're not talking about the effects. We're talking about you wake up, you're the plug. You're after that sack, okay? Now, Xans are okay money, right? Because, obviously, everyone sells press ones that they get for really cheap, and then they sell them for a premium. But per bar, you're not actually making much. You're making like three, four bucks, you know, tops if you're really taxing. Maybe like like if you're super taxing people, you're making like three or four bucks profit a bar, right? And that's if you're selling top shelf shit. But a couple things to look out for. A, if you're Plugman Johnson, you wake up and you decide to sell some fucking hulks, let's say. Uh, we're, we're just going to temporarily put this back up. Let's say you decide to sell hulks, right? Here's a pro tip. If any of you motherfuckers hear a guy out there talk about, man, I got some hulks, run. You know what hulks mean? It means he took his hulk strength and he hand-pressed the fentanyl into that green little piece of shit, dude. Don't buy the hulk, all right? The hulk, listen, those things are spooky, dude. I don't know what it is, but every hulk, like, they're always so bad. They're always so bad. But either way. Not only that, you've also got to worry about creating bar tards, right? Uh, as a Xanax plug, you are creating bar tards, and bar tards will do anything for the re-up. So if they run out of money, this is probably one of the categories of user that will rob you first, the bar tards. Therefore, we're going to put Xanax in C. On top of that, not to mention, the crime for getting caught with these is fat, right? Like, if you get caught with a bag of, let's say, like 100 Xans, right, you're Fucked. You're so boned, it's unbelievable. Not really worth the risk, in my opinion, considering you're not making huge money. Let's move on to opiates. Now, I was going to go into each pill, but I decided to just kind of broaden it and go into opiates as a whole. Uh, and by opiates, I just mean mainly pills, right? Uh, you, you've got your oxys, you've got your perks, you've got your, you know, you've got your all sorts of shit. You know what I'm saying? You, you've got everything you could imagine in the opiate category. And I feel these could all be grouped together because they all kind of have the same impact on people, right? You're creating your fucking fiends. You're creating your junkies. And the opiate guys, the people who you're serving, eventually graduate to the heroin plug, right? So this one isn't very good to sell because all you're doing is training the heroin plug's future customers, you know? It, you're basically running a boot camp, which obviously that's not profitable long term, you know? You got to keep getting new boot camp attendees in, which... I mean, I guess you could, but the consistent custies are where the money really comes in. But with things like this, you're not getting very consistent custies because if you're on opiates, you're not going to have that consistent money, right? You're not going to have a consistent job. You're fucked. You're fucked. The only upside of opiates is there's a little more profit in it than Xanax, right? There's a little more profit in it than Xanax. But also, selling opiate pills, these are cut so often, too. These these are arguably, like, they're cut with Fent even more than the fucking Xans, right? Not even arguably. It's just, like, facts. These shits are cut all the fucking time and very dangerous, right? With Xanax, you sell it to someone, it's like, if it's cut, it could kill them. With opiates, even if you're not selling a cut product, it could still kill somebody. So that's even bigger risk, right? Because if you serve that to somebody and they, you know, let's say, uh, they, they go six feet under, you're fucked, bud. You're absolutely boned. You're shit out of luck. Therefore, we're gonna put, hmm, C- minus to D+, plus is where I believe opiates belong, ladies and gentlemen. I think C- minus to D+, plus is very fair. Let's move on to Adderall. Now, I had to put Adderall and Vyvanse kind of in their own little thing, uh, because, listen... People only really sell this if they're in school. You only sell this if you're in college or high school. And outside of that, people just have prescriptions, right? Adderall is something that... In high school, I knew a lot of people who took it recreationally, which I never understood. 
I never had fun on it, but I also ha actually had ADD, so I, it, like, worked for its intended use for me. But Adderall is one of those things where you it, – it's, like it's like a Black Friday comes around for the plug, right? You, it, it's, like a, it's like a, you know, those pop-up Halloween stores every year? That's what an Adderall plug is, okay? They show up around finals, and then they just fucking vanish for the, another six months until the next semester of finals comes up, right? But during that finals week, they make so much money. I remember, to, to put this into perspective for you guys, back in high school, I had my Adderall prescription, and I got it taken away from me because my mom found out I was selling them all, right? But prior to, my, you know, my Adderall prescription getting taken from me, I would stockpile all my Adderalls, and I would sell them during finals because people would pay the, like, kids in AP classes that you would never think of doing drugs would pay astronomical prices and be okay with it because they don't know the economy of it. They don't know what it's supposed to cost. They're just like, oh, I need it for my final, right? So I'd be going to, like, fucking the, the nerdiest valedictorian AP kids and serving them Adderall. You get that clientele that you don't normally get, and they pay the premium. I was charging kids 8 to $10 in Adderall, right? Which is crazy. I knew kids who were charging more than that. And I had the 30 milligram instants, right? And I had the extendeds too. I, I had like the top of the line Adderalls, right? And I made bank as a high schooler back then. Easily, every time finals came around, from stockpiling all my prescriptions, I'd make at least a grand minimum. And that's if I didn't sell everything. Like, that's if I was, like, being nice to friends and shit. But it was nice because back in high school, that's a good chunk of money, right? Back in my sophomore year of high school, $1,000 is a lot to a high schooler, bro. That's still a lot of money today. But especially to someone that age, that's a shitload of guap, dude. Adderall has to be above Xanax and opiates. But I don't know if I'd call it A tier, simply because it's a Halloween pop-up shop drug dealer substance, okay? You only get your time a year, like once or twice. But you can have consistent custies. It's just not as frequent. Like, you get that big boom at the end of the year. But Adderall's not something that a ton of people do for fun, you know? So you're not going to have, like, fiends coming back. Let's move on to ketamine. Now, ketamine is a very good one to sell because of a few reasons, right? A, ketamine's not easy to find. If you sell good quality K, you're going to be in business, dude. If you sell pure, beautiful K, either liquid crystal, not pure, but ju just beautiful ketamine, you're going to be in business. K is hard to find, right? There's going to be a bunch of people in the comments like, oh, Goblin, man, you must not know my 17th K plug, man. Carl Ketamine, dude, he slangs this shit. I don't know Carl Ketamine, so for me, it's hard to find, all right? So we're, we're basing it off my experiences, right? And all my friends as well, like, ever ever since my friend Ashton, right, I, I really haven't been able to find good K, like, top-shelf ketamine. You know, I found my K, but I've never found good shit. But A, ketamine is something that gets the fiends coming back. B, ketamine is hard to find, which means that you, you can have, like, a near monopoly with some really good-grade ketamine, right? Like, it's not something that people commonly sell, but it's, it's something that a lot of people really want, particularly the EDM, you know, the rave scene. These motherfuckers eat this shit all day, dude. They love it. They fucking love it. They're obsessed with it. Therefore, we're going to put ketamine in A, right? Ketamine's good if you could find the fiends for it. But the only challenge I could see is, like, actually finding the people to buy it at first, right? Like, if you just decide, all right, I'm serving K, and you have no clientele, it could be a little hard to find someone who would want some K right off the bat. And also, you're not going to murder people if you, if you give them, you know, if, you, if they know what they're doing. Uh, but it, it, ketamine can cause a lot of long-term health issues, which is never good. But it's, it's not like opiates where you're just going to have custies ODing left and right, you know? It's a, I'm not saying K's safe by any means. It's not at all. But it, it's not quite at the level that the opiates are at, right? Let's move on to shrooms. Man, listen, everybody loves these things. Everybody loves shrooms. I have friends who don't even do any other drugs. Like, they only take shrooms, and that's all they do, right? Everybody loves shrooms. Even me, personally, I had a bad experience my first time tripping on them, and it made me not try them again since. But lately, I've really been considering revisiting them, and I think I'm going to uh, very soon, right? Like, in the coming months. I think I'm going to within the next, like, three or four months. That's the objective. But shrooms, ladies and gents, are good to sell because, A... You're going to have a lot of clientele. Everyone does shrooms, bro. People love these shits. And for good reason. They're all natural. You're not going to OD on shrooms. You're not going to eat too much and die. You can, you're just going to trip hard as fuck. 
right? That's that's the only consequence. Shrooms are one of the safest, if not the safest drug on this entire list, honestly. Like, acid is still very safe, yeah, but shrooms just have that all natural, like, damn, that's, that's really, that really came from the ground, bro, that was meant for us. Shrooms are S, because S for shrooms, dude, listen, if you sell shrooms, you're a good plug, you're not selling anything that's gonna hurt anyone, you're making your money, right? Shrooms plugs make good bread, dude, and you don't have to charge crazy prices either, right? You don't have to charge crazy prices at all, I've seen people charging like 25, 35, and 8, which, of course, that, that's a pretty good price, and they're still making all the money they could ask for, right? Shrooms are a good, good drug business they just make sense they just make sense like there there really is the only consequence of selling shrooms is if you get caught with them it's a felony but that's virtually everything on this list besides weed right that, that's pretty much everything on this list so that's something that i don't even think needs to really be covered shrooms rightfully have earned the s now ladies and gentlemen let's move over to lsd the long lost cousin of shrooms now, you guys know I rated this S tier in my favorite drug tier list. This is, of all time, my favorite drug. Just because I don't do it a bunch now doesn't mean it's, it's not still my most respected and favorite. I, infinite memories on this shit, dude. I, man, I, I, I have to admit, I do intend on tripping again really soon, dude. I actually, I was going to go up north uh, for court in a couple days, and my, my guy's got some ass. I, listen, I'm, listen, man, I, I think shit's about to go down, but either way. Acid is wonderful to sell kind of like shrooms because, A, it is super duper safe, right? You're not, if you're selling actual LSD, if you're not end bombing people, uh, and MBOME, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, it's called end bombing. It's when you sell someone like a, a fake version of LSD that's got a bitter taste. So if you guys take some acid and that tab tastes bitter, that's a spitter, dude. Get that shit out of your fucking mouth right now, dude. This is the one instance where spitters are definitely not quitters. But, back on topic here so i said you're not hurting anyone if you sell real shit right it's really good money you can make bank right people are comfortable paying ten dollars a tab right like your average person is not going to complain if they go and buy one tab and you charge them ten dollars they're not going to complain but realistically you paid maybe two or three bucks for that tab if you bought like a sheet you know what i'm saying so you're making percentage wise you're like tripling your money with every serve at least doubling when it comes to acid right it's very good money it's very safe to sell if you're selling real shit and honestly, there's not many drawbacks. And another thing that is a huge plus of acid is it is so easy. Oh, excuse me. I just had like a burp. Oh, jeez, dude. It, listen, I drank some soda before this, dude. It's not sitting right. That Dr. Pepper smacking different. Either way, it's very easy to hide. Like you can, acid is literally just a, a thin piece of paper. You can put it anywhere. I mean, you have to store it properly, of course. You can't let it get too hot. You got to put it in tin foil. But it, you can virtually put it anywhere, right? Inside a book, in an envelope. And, you know, if you really had to, you could, like, if a cop pulls you over and you're about to get fucked, you could just, like, slide it through the slot in your air conditioning and let it fall. Like, if you really, if it really came down to that, easy to dispose of, easy to hide, like, truly, actually, the ultimate plugs drug. But if you get caught with that once again, fat felonies all across the board. But truly, acid, I'd even say, is a little better than shrooms to sell. You're going to make those better profit margins and cash the fuck out, dude. Plus, everyone loves to trip. Come on. Now, let's move on to the next one. Cocaine. Baby, oh, baby. I love some cocaine, dude. You, mm, mm, mm. My nose is tingling for my trip up north in a few. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Ladies and gents, I fucking love this shit, okay? Cocaine is a wonderful drug to sell money-wise. All the coke plugs I know got infinite racks, okay? And it makes sense why. They pay a very low price for it. Because they buy in huge amounts. But because cocaine is so rare and it's so hard to find proper good quality coke, these plugs can upcharge like crazy, dude. I'm talking like everyone knows how expensive coke is. You know, for example, over here I'm paying 60 to $80 for a gram of some top, top shelf best coke if I'm buying one gram at a time. And that's just in the U.S., right? If you go across the pond to Europe or, the, you know, even Australia, they're paying in the triple digits for grams in some places, right? Particularly in Australia, this shit is taxed. So people get rich selling this shit very, very quickly. 
But then on the flip side, cokeheads are a problem. I mentioned earlier how Xanak Bartards are probably going to rob you. A cokehead will also do the same. Because coke addiction is no joke, right? That shit wears off in 45 minutes. Good luck maintaining your addiction without having a bunch of money to piss away or also selling drugs or having some hustle on the side, right? Good fucking luck. I literally went broke maintaining my coke addiction. Like, I straight up went broke maintaining my blow addiction. I spent so much fucking money on coke last summer. It was unbelievable, ladies and gents. But... Besides the money, you're looking at some problems, right? A, coke is no joke. If you get booked for that, they're fucking you up. The Fed, the, the judge doesn't like a cocaine dealer, right? You're getting no fucking leniency in the courtroom. They're going to make an example of you, dude. On top of that, you're going to have so much money that you got to figure out how to make it look legitimate, right? With these other things, I feel like you can kind of... Uh, you know, you, you can kind of get away with, like, just having your drug money in, like, a like a shoebox. But with Coke, the volume of money you're moving, if you're an actual, reliable, daily cocaine dealer, is a fuckload. So you need to figure out how to make it look legit. Like, for example, my blow plug, like, has a job. Like, that guy actually goes and clocks in. And I know that guy's making at least triple what he makes at that job selling blow. You know what I'm saying? But he still goes. Be, you know, like, it's... It's one of those kind of things where there's a lot of intricacies to selling coke. It's not just like, oh, sell blow, make money, you know? It's really, like it's not, it's not that simple like these other substances. You got the fiend you got to deal with. You got the money, you know, making it look legit that you got to deal with if you're selling, you know. Because the thing is, in all these other drugs, you got to sell hella volume to make, like, hella money. With coke, not fucking really, dude. We're going to go to, hmm. We're going to go to, you know what? Coke's B just because of the money. But I can't put it in A. I can't put it in A. Ketamine's a little better to sell because Coke's hard to find still, yeah. But K, you're truly going to have a monopoly. And Coke, you better have a fire guy if you're going to become the go-to for the blow. You better, you better have the reliable on that raw, dude. Next, Molly. Molly is wonderful. People keep coming back for this all the fucking time. Yes, it causes some problems, but in general, you're not going to be murdering people with this substance. Like, Xanax and Benzos are opiates, right? You're not going to be killing people with this shit. Therefore, well, you can if they take too much, but it, it's not one of those things where, like, they take it one time. Like, if you're selling pure actual MDMA uh, and, and you dose it right, you know, sell people a .2 capsule, they're not just going to die if they know how what they're doing and they take care of themselves, right? But Molly can lead down a spooky path. You get, have, you ever, have you ever seen someone who's strung out on Molly, ladies and gentlemen? These motherfuckers are crazy, but they can't really think hard enough to rob you. But I don't know if I feel comfortable putting it in B because everyone sells Molly, right? It's much more common to sell than Coke. I wouldn't say everyone sells Molly, but I feel like all my plugs who also sell LSD or shrooms, they also sell Molly on the side. There's, I've never seen a plug who their main thing is Molly. It's always like, oh, I also got some Molly, you know? And that alone should tell you that this should not be something you focus on, more just something you have on the side. Now, Lex, next, pardon me, let's move over to Lean. I just said Lex, what the fuck? Lean is tax as fuck, okay? If you're a plug who somehow has a reliable, consistent source of real bottles and you're selling it, good for you. But finding clientele for lean is not that easy, right? Like, because A, you're either going to sell it by the pint where you have to find people who have a lot of money to blow or you have to crack the seal on it, which then is just chopping the value of that bottle, right? Or you're selling fake shit, which we're not even counting that. Listen, if you, if you sell fake shit, you're not a real plug. So I don't count any of that shit. We don't talk about that here, right? But lean is okay to sell, right? It, you Sure, you might make some good money, but lean's expensive as fuck to begin with to even re-up on, right? Unless you're getting the fake boo-boo shit. Lean is tax as Fuck, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely boo-boo tax. Uh, and on top of that, it, it's not easy to convert. It's huge. Every bottle's fat as fuck. Uh, sure, you could put it in a different container, but then the seal's cracked. You know what I'm talking? You got a bunch of sealed up pints and you're riding with them. That's not super easy to hide. You basically just put those in the back seat and hope the feds don't get you. And if they do, fuck. But you can make some decent money doing this. Also, it's it's... It's, I mean, if you, if you crack the seal, it's better. But I'm going on the pretense of, like, you're actually selling the most legit pints in the whole city, right? You're selling the best pints in the whole city. 
And on that pretense, you know, you're going to have to find a really wealthy clientele. But once you find them, they come back and they have money. They're good for it. So you, you can really know that, the, you know, your clients aren't going broke. But lean plugs are also getting robbed left and right, right? If you sell lean, you're begging for it, bro. Listen, I wouldn't rob the plug who sells any of these. Maybe the heroin plug I'd rob. I wouldn't rob any of these guys on this list. But the lean plug could fucking get it, dude. The lean plug could get it any day of the week. That guy's got pints and I want him. We're taking him down. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, I'm going to put selling lean. It's just... I, I don't know, dude. I really I really feel like, once again, also, another thing with lean is people don't switch plugs for that shit. You know, it's, people don't shop around with lean as much. If, if someone's super consistent providing quality pints or, you know, if they're cracking the seal and just buying it by the ounce, then, yeah, you know, they're, they're going to always go to that guy. They have no need to shop around. I'm putting lean in D. Now, let's move down to crack. We're getting to the big leagues, ladies and gents. Crack. They always come back. You know what they say. Uh, but then they always come back to prison, too. The, the police actually say the same thing about the crack addicts. So you got to watch out for that because crack addicts, they have— Listen, if the police tell them they will save themselves from going to rehab or jail by flipping the crack plug, they're doing it immediately. Have you, have you guys ever seen those, like, a— I don't remember what show it was. There, there was some show I was watching. It was like a crime investigation show. It wasn't First 48, but it was very similar. But it did involve murders. Where they, would, they would, like, pick up these crackheads, right? And they'd be looking for the plug. And, like, they, like the, they'd be like, you know, you're going to have to, like, sober up in that jail if you don't fucking tell us. And then they're like, oh, he lives on, he lives on fucking Gas Pack Street, your honor. And they just go get his ass. Dude. Crack is risky to sell, right? Plus, fuck selling crack, dude. Fuck making crack. I mean, crackheads are cool. But come on, dude. We're putting crack in D as well. We're putting crack in D as well, dude. It's got to be there. Weed. Man, listen. Selling weed is wonderful, but it differentiates if you're in a legal or illegal state. And it also varies if you're selling concentrates, carts, or flour. We're going on the premise of you just sell flour and concentrate. You don't sell carts because you're not a fucking prick, right? So you just sell carts and, or not carts, you just sell concentrate and flour. That's it. I, I, hey, I probably got some dislikes off that last comment. Hey, whatever, bro. Put that cart down, okay? Weed is great, but flour you're not making insane profit on. Flour, listen, most of the weed plugs I know never sell weed for their only income. They sell weed to then advertise their other products, you know? Like, they'll sell Bud and be like, oh, yeah, I got some Blow too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, yeah, I got some Molly too. You know what I'm saying? Weed, flour in particular, is rarely something that people mainly sell. But if weed is the thing they mainly sell, then they also sell concentrate. Nobody is just selling flour and that's it. They're also selling a concentrate or something of that sort if, if weed is their primary focus, right? But selling weed's great because, A, everyone loves the weed man, bro. Everyone loves the weed man. The weed man's always friendly. He'll always get you right, and if he isn't, you should be going through him. And he's selling shit for better prices than the fucked up dispensaries, right? If you find a good weed man, you always learn to appreciate that guy. Because that's probably, besides the Coke plug, that's the best plug you'll ever have. Coke plugs are also awesome, dude. I've never, I don't think I've ever ran into a bad Coke dealer. Like a Coke dealer who I didn't like as a person. They're all good people, right? But my weed plugs, right? You all, everyone's got love for the plug, dude. If he's selling good bud out of the Ziploc, and he's selling great concentrate, and he's not repackaging it to charge a premium, that's fire. You gotta love that guy. Weed's an easy S tier. Let's move down. Let's move down to meth. Meth heads, dude. They don't come back as often as crack heads, and it's it's just as serious of a crime. But they don't come back as often, right? The crack heads, they're smoking that shit in their back in five fucking minutes. The meth heads. Not quite as often as the crackheads. Meth lasts a little longer, right? They'll go re-up from you and go on like an eight-day bender and come back naked. And that's not really what you're looking for. So because of that, we're going to put meth in the E tier. Not quite F. I don't really think they're... Well, I forgot about our last one. Heroin. If you sell heroin, you are dog meat, okay? If you sell heroin, I want you... I actually want your dislike if you sell heroin. Listen... I understand why people sell drugs. I totally understand why people sell drugs, right? You got to get by, and there's a demand. But heroin is the drug where I will say, no, fuck that. Because nobody starts with heroin, right? Everyone starts with opiates and graduates to heroin. Imagine, hypothetically, if all the plugs just stopped selling heroin. People would stay on opiates, which are slightly less lethal than heroin. Hey, saving lives, dude, that shit counts. 
Fuck the heroin plug. If you got a homie who's selling some heroin, go spit in his fucking sack, dude. Uh, that sounded wrong. I meant the sack of heroin, not his nuts. Either, either way, dude, spit on his heroin, dude. Ruin it. Piss on it, dude. Uh, if, if you really want to spit on a sack, if that's how you swing, go for it. But I wouldn't recommend that, right? Fuck the heroin plug. We hate that guy around here. We do not affiliate with that guy. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed the best drugs to sell tier list. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you. I will see you guys next time, my gamers. Deuces.